So good morning, everyone. Welcome to this informal conversation on our capstone project. So um, as mentioned, this is just a, an informal conversation for you to learn more about capstone project and to learn from people who have done it in the past. Hong Fook is here to share with us. And um, so I will start with the season of creation prayer. This was adapted from the 2019 prayer. So let us center ourselves uh, to God and um, let us open our session in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Creator of life, earth is full of your creatures, and by your wisdom you made them all. At your word, earth brought forth plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit. The water steamed with swarms of living creatures of every kind, and the world was filled with every kind of winged bird, walking animal, and creatures that creep upon the ground. Mountains, plains, rocks, and rivers shelter diverse communities, and through the changing seasons, your spirit renews cycles of life. During the season of creation, open our eyes to see the precious diversity that is all around us. We praise and thank you especially for the abundance of life in each ecosystem that reveals your beauty. Enlighten our minds to appreciate the delicate balance maintained by each creature. Inspire us to conserve the precious habitats that nurture this web of life. In the name of the one who came to proclaim good news to all creation, Jesus Christ, amen. Um, just a, a quick review of the course requirement once again. So the course is compri uh, comprised of live webinars and the, the first four webinars that we had, some homework and reflection questions to be answered on Thinkific platform. And we ask you to always click complete and continue for it to be recorded as completed in the uh, on Thinkific platform. And then we also have a Another course requirement, which is the um, capstone project. A capstone project is a like a culminating project for this course, and um, it represents a, it's like a crowning achievement uh, of all our efforts in this program. And through this capstone project, we will be able to practice one of the skills which is useful for animators. So if you are going to animate your communities on Laudato Si, um, putting together some events or activities to engage others is a very helpful skill to learn. So we usually time the course uh, with key global moments. So in the first cohort in, in um, July, which ended in July, we timed it, or in June, we timed the Capstone Project with the Laudato Si Week celebration. And for this cohort, we are timing it with the season of creation. And um, Beth is here with us to uh, share with us what season of creation is and why we are celebrating it. So Beth. Thank you. And I'll just um, share my screen with you. And um, hopefully everyone can see that. Okay, I might try to move that down there. Is everyone able to see that all right? Yep, beautiful. Okay, so the season of creation, it's um, a really wonderful uh, thing that the church has been doing now for a number of years. And um, it is a really great opportunity to um, have the conversation around environmental issues and um, the theology around Laudato Sea. So I think it's a perfect um, connection for the animators to be doing for their capstone project. So in terms of, now let me, for some reason it is not, there we go. So basically each year from September to October, the Christian community celebrates the season of creation by praying and acting together to protect our common home. And during this time, Catholics unite with others in the global family to pray for and protect all aspects of God's beautifully complex web of creation. And each year, the season of creation um, has uh, a theme. And so this year it is a home for all, 
renewing the oikos of God. Now, um, the season actually begins on September 1st, which is also the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation. And this is an annual day that was established by Pope Francis in 2015 for Catholics, but it had been going on um, in ecumenical circles for a number of years prior to, to that. But it really got an impetus for Catholics in 2015 when Laudato Si was released. And so basically the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation kicks off the season of creation and it's an opportunity to pray, reflect and act to care for God's creation. And so in recent years, thousands of Catholics on six continents, united with the global family, have organised local activities to participate in ecological celebrations. And so both events, the World Day of Prayer and the whole season of creation, provide opportunities to think about what we can do to make amends and repair the relationships that we have with creation, to pray for and protect all aspects of God's beautifully complex web of life. So basically Pope Francis in his announcement for the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation said back in 2015, that this annual day offers to individual believers and to the community a precious opportunity to renew our personal participation in this vocation as custodians of creation, raising to God our thanks for the marvellous works that have been entrusted to our care, invoking God's help for the protection of creation and God's mercy for the sins committed against the world in which we live. little video is a, a good little snapshot that quickly sort of captures what the main um, uh, thrust and aims are for the, the season. So this year's season, if we unpack that theme a little bit more, um, as I already said, the season of creation is the time of year when the world's 2.2 billion Christians are invited to pray and care for creation. And this year, the symbol of a tent is used for the theme, a home for all, renewing the oikos of God. Oikos is the Greek word for home or household, the earth community. So essentially, we are all playing our part to renew the earth community that God has created. And so when we see the tent, we remember that this planet is a home for all. And so in some communities, they're actually putting up a tent like physically a tent to sort of um, promote the theme and to sort of remind us that, you know, we're all, we're all called to look after our home. And everyone essentially is welcome in this home. Everything has its place and it's up to us to look after the only safe and comfortable home that we have. So there's some wonderful resources out there that can help um, people celebrate the season and one of and what I um, have spoken to Cheryl about is I, I will send through to her um, these resources that um, you'll be able to access yourself but the first one the 2021 celebration guide for the season of creation that's actually available at the website I've already downloaded it so I'm happy to as I said send that on to Cheryl who can pass that on to you. And the website here um, is a wonderful website. Um, 
I'll go to it in a minute just in case I can't get back to the the mess get, get back to this PowerPoint. But the second um, resource, a Catholic season of creation year B, this is actually an Australian resource that has been produced by Columbans in Australia. Um, but the beauty of this particular resource is it's a liturgical resource for Sundays. And so there's prayers, homily notes and actions. And so um, you could be sending this to your parish priest and um, they would be able to sort of use the readings of the day to connect in with the season of creation. So it's not, it wouldn't be seen as an extra, it would be just being integrated into the Sunday liturgy. Um, the other resource that is Australian specific, but again, you might find it useful, our Australian bishops have released their social justice statement for 2021, 2022, and they're actually calling it cry of the earth, cry of the poor, and launching um, the Laudato Si action platform for that. And there's some really lovely resources that are connected to that. So that's also something that you might find useful. Um, if I go to the website, um, and it's not, how do I get onto the, the PowerPoint, the present slideshow it's from current slide. If I go to here, um, this is the Season of Creation website. Um, you can actually join up and um, then you can get the resources yourself. But um, as I said, I've already downloaded the guide. Um, so all of those things, you can just go on yourself and download them separately. But um, I will send that to you if you, you want it. But there's a whole lot of um, other information on this um, for the, the, the season that I think it's worthwhile having a look at it yourself. So I... Um, might stop sharing there but just if anyone's got any questions or um anything they want clarified around that i'm happy to take questions julie you unmute thank you that's real that was really informative beth thank you so much i just wanted to ask if you had a link to the youtube that you um that, that I remember seeing that last year. It may have been around since 2015. I've only been involved for a small while. Do you know the, um, yeah. the link? I mean, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll send that through um, with Cheryl as, to Cheryl as well. Is that okay, Cheryl, if I do that? Yep. Yeah. Thank it you. Because it's, it's really good. It's just, it's just a short, sharp little yeah. snapshot, you know. So, yeah, so. last year we did it with our, um, our first mass for the first, like on, in as just an excerpt at the beginning of Mass, we just said, welcome to the season of creation and played that, but I can't remember. I couldn't find it when I was looking for it. So I've obviously lost to whatever I had, yeah. but it was it's a really good thing because if we're doing online Masses, it, you can just do it online and insert yeah. it into the... Yeah. And the, the beauty of the other resource that's got the um, Sunday readings is you could, like even if you the priest, your parish priest just sort of put in... Uh, the one, one or two prayers for the prayers of the faithful that's a way of acknowledging um this this season so um there's opportunities to make it bigger or just even a little bit um is it's it's really up to your own context i think so all right i'll leave it there thanks cheryl Thank you so much, Beth. Um, that was a great way to present the season of creation. And um, I also invited uh, one of our animator of animators who graduated just last year from the same course. And she is also here with us to share um, the capstone project that she did. And you can ask her about the challenges that she met as she planned her capstone project or as she implement or whatever wins that she had as she did in the capstone project. So uh, Hong Fook is from Vietnam and she is the uh, vice director for Caritas Dalat. You will have to unmute Hong Fook. 
Good morning, everybody. Yeah, as uh, Sherry introduced, I'm Hong Phuc. I'm from uh, Vietnam. And I also joined the Letter to Sea Animator course uh, last year. Uh, I just share a little bit uh, what the Capstone project I did last year. Um, this is the seed exchange. Uh, what is it? Um, when we, because I work with the ethnic minority in our diocese and uh, in their contacts, um, seeds are the right of the women. They are the right of the farmers and uh, the native seed. And the native seed are increasing lost recently due to, uh, due to modern agriculture with the use of hybrid seed and chemical fertilizer and so on. So the right of farmer also lost. And when we did this um, capstone project, we did with our indigenous farmer from 10 villages in Lam Dong province. And then they come together to pray for local seed and then they share to each other. In this event, the seed will be blessed and share and the people bring back to sow it. Uh, when they sow at home, they also share the results. The new seeds come from those garden and then continue to, to be collected and shared to multiply it, to um, nourish the earth. And this activity we organize with uh, Caritas uh, Dalat. Um, this is the, we organize a workshop in the regional, uh, sub-regional action learning plat platform between different groups of ethnic minority on people-led development uh, to work on food sovereignty. So this we did in Đăng Khan Ở, Lạc Dương, Lâm Đồng, Việt Nam. Now, this is some photo when uh, the people pray together and pray to the seed and they uh, understand the deep meaning of the seed and, uh, and reflection. After that, they share together. Uh, the seed they will bring from each the different uh, villages and then they share to other one in order is continue to be multiplied. So another capstone project, I um, we organize outdoor mask, uh, mask care for creation. We did it uh, on uh, the last day of September 2002 in the pastoral center, and there we gather um, the people, including Caritas de la Stab, and they also mostly the farmer from different community. Uh, from a different ethnic group in Lam Dong. Um, General Vika, director of Caritas Dalat, uh, he held the mask and then he said, he in, invited everybody to contemplate the nature, the sky, listening the bird and care for our common home as the call of our pop passes. He said uh, the pop weekly general audience on uh, 16 September, those who know how to contemplate will more easily set to work to change that produce degradation and damage to heal health. They will strive to educate and promote new product production and consumption habits to contribute to a new model of economic growth that guarantee respect to our common home. And this is uh, some uh, photo. We organize an um, outdoor mask with nature, listening to the um, bird, and then um, breath the fresh air together with creation. We bless um, the God. And another capstone project, we did the creation work and pilgrimage. 
um, 21st Carita staff join a day to listen, listening to and listening from creation. Follow, following by uh, reflection, we did in the pastoral center of the diocese with a duration of three hours. Uh, on the programs, we have three, four stations. In each station, we have uh, meditate about the sister air, uh, brother water, model, and um, ecosystem web of life. And after meditation, we each of participant will work around, and each of them will take uh, ten photo of our beautiful nature. They they, um, they catch up. And finally, um, three subgroups, um, <clears throat> they uh, sit together, discuss, and draw the vision of community in 2050 and their commitment um, to carry uh, for our common home. And this is some photo. We work together and enjoy the nature. Meditate with um, the Pradya, um, Mother Madhya, the um, sister air and water and also ecosystem. And this is the, the poster of each group after they discuss the they draw it. So um, my capstone project is very simple like this, and I, I would like to share to you in order you have some idea how to do the capstone project in your course. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Hong Fook. As you noticed, um, many of our participants the past year um, did two or more capstone projects <laughs> during the course. Um, so you, you can ask Hong Fook any question, uh, but I would also first ask Hong Fook to share any learnings that you had as you were doing your capstone. Um. First of all, um, um, when I, I see that I have to take the capstone project, I'm a little bit nervous <laughs> because I think this is just the, the course and then they, they take different uh, classes or session and that's it. But then capstone project is something I have to do, I have to act. Um, but um, uh, luckily, I work in uh, Caritas um, uh, Diocese, and in our diocese, we also aim to the agroecology about um, 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 food sovereignty. And the more reading uh, La to see, the more we see that our direction is Oh, this this is the church. This is the um, the, the whole global we, we are on focusing on, and that's really I'm very interested to to join in. And um, since that time, we um, I bring the idea with uh, our our office and our staff. We discuss together. We um, I myself um, prepare some material for that because as least I joined the course and I have the uh, opportunity to assess some resources and then we're starting. Yeah. Um, so um, our staff also very interested because they themselves are the, the few staff. They work with their community, ethnic community in the community. So uh, each of um, each of months, um, they come. We, we come together to to have reflection, discussion, and meeting, and also we build the program. So that's uh, continue to going on. Uh, when they already um, accepted and and multiply, they starting to to come to the community and and ask them to join as well. Thank you, Hong Fook. Uh, as you notice, we usually start our capstone project with where we are and what we have. And Hong Fook started it um, as being part of Caritas Dalat, and that's how she worked through 
the capstone project. Um, anyone can ask question, and Hong Fook will be happy to answer if you have any. Oh, um, yes. are you because of the outdoor mass and the the seed project that was done last year? Is that being carried on? Um, into this year as well? Like, will there be another outdoor mass for this season of creation? Is that the, is there an aim to do that? Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Actually, this time in Vietnam is really serious, uh, like COVID, and we don't have mass uh, two, year, uh, two, two months already. We yes. are not gathering and all participants online only. So it's, uh, <laughs> we cannot it's organize same, yeah. this year. <laughs> but for the working and uh, playing with creation, we, we can do this year as well with some people, but uh, at least we can do, yeah. Yeah, we, we are in the same situation here in Australia too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Julie. Um, mine's more about the challenges that I find that, that I'm finding this year, and that's mainly due to COVID. So everything that we had to, in order to get the message out, we have to have a means to get into the community other than, well, it's, it's, it's difficult as an individual to do that unless you have some sort of um, access to the community. And I guess that's through our parish priest usually. So is that considered something, this is probably more of a general question for Cheryl and Beth, as well as for you, Humble. But um, is, it, is it okay that we work through the priest or through the liturgical group or through other areas? Because my, my, I'm nervous because I'm not sure that they'll trust me to run like I wanted to do an examen at one one of the things so that because it's something that you could do online you know just praying and and being guided through an ecological examen or something like that um but then they have to have faith in you that you can you are able to do that so maybe do you feel like we should just believe in ourselves and see how we go like at least give it a go julie do you have a relationship with your parish priest like does he is, does he know you and is oh he, yeah he knows yeah. me well i'm not sure that he's that we've, we've got a funny relationship it's a it's a bit sticky at the moment unfortunately we're trying to clean it up but um, yeah yeah see i think I, I really think from, from an Australian context, and so I apologise to people um, who are not in the Australian context, but because of the social justice statement from the Australian Catholic bishops, it really gives you a lot of leverage. And so if your parish priest is not doing anything around it, he could, you can sell it and say, look, I'm, I'm prepared to do something around this for mm. the parish. Um, but uh, I, I, um, I think believe in yourself. Um, and actually, have you got the ecological examine that is the online one? Have you been, have you? There's, yeah, there's, you I've, the one that was in our course was, was really great. Yeah. I love that. And then there's the one through the season of creation as well. So and I've there's got those. one from the Jesuits. Have you seen that yes. one? Sorry, yeah. that was the one I thought that was with our course. Is there oh, a... Okay, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, because because you can actually just sort of it's got lovely images and just you can sort of speak to that as you as you do it online in a way. I might I mightn't have the I might just have the script. I'll have to check that out. So it's on the Jesuit website, is it? Yeah. Or... It, it, it there is there is something I've used. It's got really lovely images, and it, you, you just actually it comes up and it, it and it takes you through the examine. The ecological. Okay, I have another look at it. I did it a while ago, so maybe. Yeah, thank you. That's great. No, oh, and uh, it's really great that the Australian church has that statement now. Sandy mm. shared it with me also a while back that they are coming up with, with this beautiful statement, which is focused on ecology. 
So no. really, really great. But yes, I would advise you also to believe in yourselves <laughs> because this is, you know, um, it's not, um, not in all places would you have a great relationship with your parish priest. So it's, it's not applicable to all. So for some, it will be difficult. For some, some parish priests would be a bit, you know, not so much in, has a different focus because some, for example, are more focused on social issues rather than ecological issues even if they are really connected. But I mean, the, even Bishop Alwyn admitted that um, bishops would also have their own priorities and focuses. So uh, yeah, we just have to live with that. And we just need to try to, what we really try to do is to influence them to, to see more about the ecological uh, side of things. But um, I would advise you to start with a group of people you are in contact with. Start with your friends or family. And, and your network and your community. And then um, we had many uh, animators in the past who also do not have, a the religious are very um, lucky because they have their congregations. But for some, you will have to rely to your friends, you know, to reach out to your friends and, and uh, community. Uh, yeah, Hong Fook is, is quite lucky <laughs> to have Caritas who is very supportive of mm -hmm. these efforts and it's very much aligned also with the programming of Caritas in their area. So that was one big uh, thing for, for Hong Kong to be able to carry out all these capstone projects. Uh, it's the support also of the archdiocese, the parish, plus uh, Caritas. Uh, Rohit, would you have any questions? None at this point of time. It's a matter of just starting off and then, you know, getting in touch with you because, you know, you have a vision and you have a program in mind and it may not necessarily fall in that direction. And I, uh, you know, I really agree that at times it can be a sticky uh, position with your parish priest at times. You need to really uh, work that around. So let's see how it goes. But um, I'm just looking and keeping my options open in terms of having two, three uh, programs run simultaneously. So if one of them really clicks well, so then I work on, uh, you know, putting my focus more on that. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah, At this right. point of time, none, because the, I haven't really uh, begun my capstone. Uh, uh, the groundwork is still on its way. So I'm not going to have any further questions at this point of time other than uh, you know capturing everything and keeping everything in mind so use what best comes to you at that moment great Rohit just remember Ray is here to support you <laughs> if you are not in touch with each other yet Ray will be happy to, to you know uh, guide you if you need some guidance later on uh, Pete any sure. questions for Hanfo? certainly Um, no, I don't, I don't have a question. I, I, um, I'm working on uh, an ecumenical prayer uh, time with um, on September the 1st for uh, the day of prayer for creation. So hopefully that will happen. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Marist priest, a member of a religious order living within a parish. I'm not the parish priest, but I'm, I can hopefully... Um, maybe also organize an outdoor mass during the season of creation. We live on a property that is uh, that belongs to local uh, native peoples, the Maori uh, mm. people here. So we can hopefully have an outdoor mass on our, on our marae here uh, during the season of creation. So I've got a couple of, a couple of ideas in mind. Thank you, Pete. So I'll just show, share with you first. Uh, and again, thank you so much, Hong Fook, for sharing uh, with us your capstone and your learnings. Uh, very, very helpful. And um, just to recap about the requirements on the capstone project, we are looking, since we are trying to practice the skill of um, getting people together and uh, organizing events with them or working with them, uh, the event should involve five or more people. And it can be done digital or online or in person, but in person is if only only if allowed in our locations or context. 
uh, for the past more than a year since, well, since last year, we have been doing more, mostly digital activities because of the situation. Um, it can be done together with co-participants in your area if you know uh, some of the other participants from your place and you can engage other people in your community like your parish priest or, or a, an organization or a group of people and should be carried out during the season of creation. Beth explained that season of creation is from September 1 to October 4. And it should fall under any of the following framework of the Laudato Si movement, ecological conversion, uh, which is an example, uh, was some folks uh, outdoor mass, footprint reduction, it can be tree planting, uh, beach cleanups, and raising a prophetic voice. And I just, yeah. So these are some of the examples. Um, and uh, I will also be sharing this with you on email. So under ecological conversion, organized outdoor mass, prayer service outdoors, or digital uh, ecological and ec ecumenical prayer service for the season of creation, organize a creation walk, like what Hong Fook did, uh, integrate creation into Sunday liturgies. Beth mentioned this also, and she has resources. Uh, organize a Bible study uh, in person or online a, or a conversation on Laudato Si. It could be, it need not be a Bible study, but just a conversation on the, what, on the message of Laudato Si. And if you have a good relationship with your parish priest to promote, if, and if he allows you to promote season of creation during mass, that is also one way to do it. Or start or join a circle. If you have, there is a Laudato Si circle in your place to join it. Or you can start your own circle from the group of people you are working with on, in this project. You can have or start your own Laudato Si circle and have like monthly meetings or uh, monthly prayer sessions. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or, or reflections and then footprint reduction could be tree planting tree growing because as we know the trees absorb the car the carbon and you know and then co close coastal clean ups because there's in some places there's much way too many plastics which destroys the um, ecosystem in the ocean and or you can start a parish garden some animators did this because they noticed that nobody's tending to the garden in their parish so they asked some of their friends and uh, they worked together to uh, start a parish garden. It can be a vegetable garden if the parish priest allows. And then clean energy in the parish or hold a sustainability event or just some information sharing. Uh, encourage sustainable living, some created materials on how or, or tips on how to have uh, to live sustainably. Uh, green your parish or institution, like start discussion about uh, solar panels in your parish or start a buy nothing group in your parish or nothing new. <laughs> so it's, it's like a, a something uh, done by in the past. Raising a prophetic voice um, means that we are raising the, like the voice of Catholic in some issues like organizing a climate strike. A climate strike is now also being done digitally but this, this is mostly done by, um, the youth are very good at this. <laughs> so this is their, their thing. Uh, organize a signature drive for fossil fuel divestment or to okay. encourage your archdiocese or diocese to divest their assets or, or investment in, in, uh, from fossil fuel companies. Uh, organize a signature drive for local ecological issue in your, in your country participate or organize in a campaign that call for restoration of creation and also the Healthy Planet, Healthy People campaign, which Ray will talk to us about in, in a minute. So uh, Hong Fook shared this picture earlier of the outdoor mass and their walk for creation, um, which also involved some reflection. Uh, and this is also a, a, an, an, an session on Laudato Si organized by the youth of Timor-Leste in the different parishes in their countries. So they talk to the parish priest, ask them ask, uh, that they be allowed to speak about Laudato Si uh, to the youth or children, and they were allowed to do it. So this is a, a very good way to um, make people aware of the message of Laudato Si and at the same time, get them to act 
to to protect and uh, uh, the creation and uh, so I am so this is one of their the many things that they did uh, and the many sessions that they had in their parishes. This was done with, by some animators in India. They had recycling plastic reduction campaign, but uh, it's not only recycling project, but they also had uh, like sessions on how, why we need to reduce plastic or why we need to, to be more sustainable in, in our lifestyles. So it's accompanied by, with some lectures and presentations to the different parishes. And um, some did coastal clean up. This is also in India. So it really depends on what you foresee as some major issues in your, in your place. So for some, it's, it's the, the trash that's being thrown in the ocean. So this is what they did. And it's under footprint reduction. And one of our, uh, you have met, if you have met Prince Papa, Prince is now working with, with the Laudato Si movement, but he is also an, an, a theater actor and an activist. And he is one, when I joined in Laudato Si movement, he, he is one of my first graduates in this course. He is from Africa, and um, one because then we only have very few. We have like thirty graduates then in that cohort, and so I know them one by one. And um, he organized a one hundred. He helped to organize the one hundred March. It's for renewable energy in Kenya, so that's one way to raise prophetic voice. And of course, one another way is uh, about the signature campaign on healthy planet, healthy people. And I will ask Ray to take us through this one. Ray? Yes, yes. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ray. Uh, thank you, Cheryl, for bringing a lovely group together. It's a very good way to start the morning in India though we are at different time zones. Yes, um, I mean, the larger picture of uh, climate change and uh, humanity today is something that uh, as a Lauda to see animator, we need to keep our tab on. And uh, especially in the recent days, uh, global media has been highlighting how devastating this climate change is already uh, you know, happening. And then what we need to be prepared for so this healthy planet and healthy people petition is linked to what uh, UN level, there is a huge process that is going on and people expect that 2021 may be a, a turning point. And uh, we need to have our footprint there, our thumb impression and our you know, signature put in there. So basically this uh, uh, UN COP, COP stands for Conference of Parties. And that is uh, COP15 is happening uh, in October and 26 again, I think it's in Scotland, right? It's going to be in Glasgow, yeah. Uh, so these are occasions actually to rally the opinion of the local communities. And uh, if we are able to get some numbers signing into it, that will be the you know best thing in the current scenario. So if anyone wants to take this project for Capstone, you're very welcome and we can work together. Yeah. Now, as a, again, a further enlargement, it's happening at the same time as the pandemic. So again, COVID and climate change are two things that we need to work for. And then businesses have always looked at profit over people. They are not always interested in helping the poor. Though, quote unquote, they will say, yes, this is our humanity. So we need to put a sharp analysis and then try to understand. So this campaign is about gathering as many signatures as possible. What we know in 2016, when Paris Agreement happened, I think many uh, of the activist youth and priests, sisters all together put a huge campaign there. I think uh, they did influence, but uh, of course, Laudatusi came before Paris Agreement. So again, Main issues, definitely how the current change is affecting our context adversely, my brothers and sisters, who have done the least to cause it. So earlier we used to use a jargon, polluter pay. 
you know, that principle, but it hasn't gone fully home. So we need to re-emphasize with new text. And then, of course, uh, all climate is human induced. It's not that nature is doing it, you know. So we need to recognize that principle. And then whatever we do is about transformative action so that cry of the earth and cry of the poor are understood. So this presentation, I think uh, it can be shared eventually. I mean, in the interest of time, I'll just again highlight a couple of points. So you can host a virtual outreach event. That's very good. And in fact, for myself, what I am doing, personally, I have signed it. And then I've got already about 200 young girls from an education wing to sign it. And now I'm in field area where uh, with the diocese, we are working about how the diocese can adopt love the pussy. So next three days, I will have chance to get more of the field workers to sign this petition. So <clears throat> again, in reaching out, of course, COVID safety is something. In India, September could be uh, the, the third wave, but uh, October, they say it may peak. So we need to be very clear. And then, of course, doing it online using your mobile, I think this is a great instrument to work with. So make this work, you know, the small smartphone. And then the petition is there. So don't lose time. First, you sign. Have you signed it yourself? If not, do it now in less than two minutes. <laughs> and then get 10 more in this month and maybe 100 more next month. But numbers count here. So... I definitely would urge you. And there is a, an organization which is working internationally called MIJAR. So I am now advising them. So a lot of young farmers, the men and women, we hope to have them sign it soon. Yeah, I think in Philippines also there is a wing of MIJAR. And in Vietnam there is and uh, many other countries. So in India, we are working in, with 11 members. So we should be able to rally some numbers soon. Yeah, so don't miss it. Sign it immediately. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Cheryl. Thank you so much, Ray, for <clears throat> promoting our uh, petition and for showing how it can be a capstone project or part of your capstone project or your second or third capstone project. And um, would you have any other questions on in general and on capstone, on the petition? Yes, Julie has a question. Yes, Julie. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. That was really interesting, Ray. Um, I went to sign the petition and it says, are you part of an organizational group? I think as one of the questions. So I thought I'm just going to wait because I want to know, I would like to be part of something bigger to get more people to sign, but I, is, that, is that a good idea or do does that make no difference at all, really? It's just, it's just like, because I'd like to do it and organise it in my parish as, as you're suggesting as part of the capstone. So should I do it by that way or does it matter just do the individual? It's better to do it by the organisation. And then okay. should I get approval? What I have done, I just signed it first. Okay, <laughs> that's very important. And then use it as an evidence to motivate a few more. That would be my practical way because it's about time. So every day we should add up numbers and the presence of the church is very important. Yeah, immediately in the next day or two days, I got uh, a chance to interact with several youth with whom we work for education and leadership. So I gave the link to them and many of them sent me a message that they did it. So it's, it's a, a open space, but I, ideally, yes, if you have a good group in the parish, there's nothing like it. So we must get more people, more groups animated with that. Yeah. But thanks, Julie. It's a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, I just also want to, uh, to say that um, we could also use this petition as an opening to discuss about some ecological problems in an area and to discuss about our data sea. And, you know, so uh, yeah. it's not merely like, getting signatures, but as Ray mentioned, it should be an open space. It should be the space where you can have this, this kind of dialogue with, with the others, uh, not only to promote the petition, but also to make them aware of how um, the Catholic voice could matter also in this discussion, in this global discussion. And I also want to mention that Pope Francis will be in Glasgow. And 
And then it would be a good idea to like for our signatures to accompany him and to let Absolutely. him know that he's not alone in this discussion. So that's why we are working so hard to get a huge number so that when he goes there, he has the numbers also to back him up. Yes. And says enough creation itself could be a great opportunity to move this forward. <clears throat> so, uh, would you have other questions? Uh, I will just, uh, we have already um, spoken earlier about how you are planning to do your capstone or how you are thinking to do your capstone, but um, just to mention and, well, I forgot to thank Ray. Ray, thank you <laughs> for, for sharing about the petition here. And, um, so it's like 6.30 in the morning for Ray or 7.30, 7 so very early. And Rohit as well, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. so, um, Good to be together. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. There is a, um, we would ask you to register your activity at the seasonofcreation.org. There is an event tab, which you will click. What is the reason for us to asking you to, to register is for people to know that there are many who are participating in the season of creation and to inspire them to also participate. So there is an event there where uh, event section, event tab, where you can uh, log your event. So it will just ask you for the description of your events, the location, and then. But uh, how do we know that you have completed your capstone project? Uh, we will be emailing to you a Google form and there will be questions to answer. And we will ask you about these things, the brief description of the project, a brief description of the outcome. And in the outcome, I want to emphasize that it need not be a successful project because we learn both from our successes and our failures. So this is take this as just a learning space, just for you to take a stab at, uh, at organizing something for creation. So uh, if you invited nine and two showed up, that's fine. You need not have the full number. So just what's important here is that we learn something or we tried it and we take, took the first step. And then we'll ask, uh, maybe briefly describe what went well in your event and what can be improved this next time. There were quite a couple of animators in the past who had like total failures in, in their capstone, but they have a lot of learnings, like how to do it the next time. So just... Uh, just bear with yourself as you are doing this project and um, know that it's more of the learning that, that's important in this process. So a Google form will be emailed to you. And ah, yeah, and there is a mini project I'm doing for the region for Asia and Oceania. Um, the, in the past, we used to celebrate the season through a, like a regional webinar, a huge one. But now I want, what I want is to have many stories. Like uh, this is a storytelling project and I wanted to get the story of the animators. Uh, why stories? Because stories motivate, stories connect and stories inspire. So your stories could help motivate people to take action. Uh, this is, a, I'm looking at micro stories, 300, words maybe and we plan to share one story every day during the season of creation or if we have more maybe two stories per day because uh somebody from edmund rice uh in australia contacted me and wanted to integrate their current program storytelling also about their efforts of the different schools uh, of edmund rice uh on ecology and they wanted to integrate with this project so yeah I would like then to ask you if you can share your stories and there are some guidelines in this link. I will also send it in the email. And yeah, so would you have any other questions before we wrap up on the course or on, on whatever uh, each of us has shared today? But uh, know that uh, again, uh, Ray is here to guide you. 
Beth is here to guide you and myself. So if you have any questions as you are doing your capstone, please feel free to email us. But if you have questions now, we still we have two minutes. <laughs> so we can still, yes, Julie. Sorry, I'm gonna get the prize for the most questions. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to ask, I know you were talking about the number of animators in different countries. Um, are there many in Australia? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are, I, I think more than a hundred in Australia. And some of them are very active in their, their dioceses. Okay. So Could I, should I speak like to, to Beth connect? about that? Or? Yes, yes. Beth, do you know all about the different ones and, and everything or? Uh, what I'm planning, um, I would, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We could connect you to the animators in your place if we have some animators there. Yeah. Julie, I, I actually haven't really connected in with other animators as such in Australia. Um, so, and because I'm not, I'm not even aware of um, the names or the emails of, of them because they've, it's happened at different times as well. Yeah. Um, so even when I was training back in 2018, I didn't really connect in with other Australian animators, but um, there's lots of other, um, like I'm in, involved in Catholic Earth Care um, in New South Wales, but also the national body through Caritas, Catholic Earth Care. And so there's people doing lots of different things, um, but I agree it would be good to sort of have a, um, an overall connection with the Australian animators and, and actually for every country to be connected in with their own group. I mean, obviously the East Timor group are very connected. They know each other. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the East Timor group is different because they are the ones who invited them. <laughs> so. Yeah. But you've got to start at least with one. So if Beth knows someone else, that would be good. But maybe Cheryl, if you have a list of them, and yeah. their email addresses, we could just start something. I don't know. Is Unfortunately, that we are also held back by the data protection. So we are unable to share the emails, but what I can do is to create a platform where we could uh, collaborate and send them link. And if they wanted to be part, maybe a Google group will do. And then if they wanna be part of it, then they could join through that link. Uh, because uh, as it is now, we could not really share the emails widely because of the data protection uh, clause <laughs> but yes we'll find ways and we're trying to develop some platform but it is taking us some time to have like a, a forum group in in the website because that would be the best way to connect but yeah Cheryl but, I'm wondering if on the um the 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 website of the um the animators or the Ladado C um movement whether they're like so animate people who have done the animators course could be invited to upload their their name and their their email so then that would show that people are obviously open to being contacted um i'm just wondering whether that's something that's that's possible that, yeah. that could I, be done i could check with goms but what i know is that they are working to have like groups different groups in that website so like for example australia india per, that will, might be done per country yes um, yeah because it's it's really it is ideal that you you get to work together at least know each other because then if you have some events then you can invite them to be speakers or you know you can invite each other and yeah so that's something that we are we have been working on for some time now <laughs> is, is having this platform. But yeah, um, we are planning on using the, the Laudato Si Animators webpage for that, for that efforts. But meanwhile, I'm thinking more of having a Google group bet if you are okay to manage that one, then yeah, I, I, can, I can create a group and invite and send the link to all animators in Australia to, to connect through the Google group. This is what Ray and the rest of the India animators are, are doing now. Mm -hmm. they, they already, they also have their Google group. They have their WhatsApp group because many of them are into WhatsApp. So they're more into WhatsApp group. Oh, yeah. It's good to localize. It's good yeah, to except localize me because them. I don't understand the language. So I'm not there. Oh, yeah. well, we could do that too. That's, yeah. That's, that's so quite, we can create a group good. and then send the link and invite everyone through that link then they could opt to, to be part of that. And yeah, 
then that's something which we can do. And we have substantial number in Australia to get that going. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, um, I just want to let you know that we will upload this conversation on, on Thinkific so that the others can learn and, and watch and learn. And um, if you have any questions, Beth, Ray, Hongpo, and I are here to support. Uh, and with this, we close our session by listening to this uh, music slash prayer. everyone and have a blessed day have a great afternoon and um we are here on email to support you if you need anything thank you cheryl thank you too. Thank thanks you. Cheryl. cheryl thanks ray thanks beth thank, thank you. you have a good thank day you. bye have thanks. a good day i'll be in touch yeah. cheryl can you thanks, tell Tom. me that song where, where where did you get that from it's That's on YouTube. Beautiful. It's a, a song from one of the groups here in the Philippines. Ah, uh, it's, it's called Earth Keeper. And who's it by? Uh, 
It's called Bukas Palad, but I can I can share the link on. Oh, that would be great. It's, yeah, it's lovely. It's really YouTube. nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. I'm always too. looking for things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like when you have like meetings or. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's really nice. Thank you. Yeah, so it's on chat, and you can copy the link. <laughs> yep, um, just done it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you take care all. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah, Rohit. Thank you. See you. Thanks a lot, Cheryl. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.